Hey, this is Gail from Bernina of Naperville. Do you ever feel like, I don't know, like maybe your shoelaces just aren't fancy enough? Or are you ever left like, oh my gosh, a shoelace breaks and you're like, I don't have any more shoelaces? Well, listen, this tutorial is for you. Now, whether you're making shoelaces for yourself, like I have here out of my little bird tiny things from Kaufman Fabric, or if you're making some cute rainbow laces for your little kidlets. This is an excellent project for learning how to do a rolled hem on your Bernina L8 series uh, serger or any other serger for that matter. This is a very easy, easy thing to make, especially if you have like little kiddos who are always breaking their shoelaces or whatever. I do like to use tiny pictures on fabrics. You can see here, the ones that I used was this uh, rainbow fabric. Um, these are little birds. We have little dogs. We have little cats. We have whiskers. We have all kinds of stuff. But regardless of what you use, the thing that is key to this is cutting your bias strips at about an inch and a quarter. And you can just use your favorite way to cut your bias pieces. Now, for kids' shoes, you can probably go ahead and just take a length like this. This is about a yard and a quarter. But if you're making grown-up shoelaces, you're gonna wanna sew with your sewing machine and make sure that when you stitch this, you press your seams open at the end. Now. How are we gonna make this? Well, we have some crucial ingredients here. We need regular sewing or serging thread because we're gonna make these shoelaces on the serger. So I'm using gray Saracore in my needle and in my lower looper. And I'm using a light color soft lock. This is by Wonderfill. And I'm using this in the upper looper. Um, you could use you know, all white, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, for this, I had all black for these laces. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly stitch this together on my sewing machine, and then I wanna show you a couple of other things that you might need. So I got these on Amazon, and this is just a variety selection of aglets. Aglet, that is the name of what you call those little protectors on your shoelace, that little piece there. So you could pick up a variety pack of these. I have to tell you, I'm not, I can't endorse one particular version over the other. I mean, you do wanna try to use the smallest one possible, but you know, sometimes it's, you can't squeeze a 10 pound bag of potatoes in a five pound sack, you know what I'm saying? So I use a darning needle to do that. And once they're on, I use the hair dryer. So I'll show you how to use that in just a moment, but we've got to get our serger up and at them. So I'm working here with my Bernina L890. Now, of course, we know that this machine has the guided access. So that will take us right through threading the machine for the three thread rolled hem. And the three thread rolled hem is stitch number eight on this machine. I've also made no adjustments to the length or the differential feed or anything like that. I am just straight up doing the stitch the way that the machine recommends. Now I do have to rethread, and it is actually one of my favorite things to do. So I'm just gonna snip all of these threads lift my needle up. I can do that with the heel part of my foot control. And then lift my presser foot and just pull this through. There we go. And now I need to replace the green path, the blue path, and the red path with my threads. So the green and the red path gets the Saracore gray thread and the blue path gets the Saracore. Open up my door here, just take everything out so you can see how fuzzy and dirty my machine is. How about that? <laughs> so I'm ready to thread. I've already removed the 
left needle and I'm just using the right needle there in the overlocking section. I have made sure that my little um, two thread adapter has swung out this way and, um, and I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna turn my little guy here that's gonna close these little tubes down here so that when you get ready to start, now if I press on my foot control, you can hear that? That's the sound of the air sucking through these tubes. So I'm gonna be threading red and blue. So now all I wanna do is just pull about 16 centimeters through And then I'm gonna hold this right above there, right above that blue piece right there, and then it goes right in. And then I just continue with the red path, pulling about the 16 centimeters, hovering the thread over that and pressing. There we go. All right, so the loopers are threaded and now I'll take the green path And just follow along here, here, and here, and always using my needle threader, thread my needle. Once everything's threaded up, you have to remember to adjust your threader, put it back to normal, Close that door and close this one. All right, now I'm not even gonna bring in my fabric yet. We literally wanna pay attention right here. So for those of you that might not have an L890, the tension adjustments is four for the green path, four for the blue path, and five and a half for the lower looper. Now, sometimes you might have to change this up a little bit uh, depending on your model of the machine, but that's what this machine is set for. What I need to do is actually make a chain. So I'm gonna swing my foot out like this and get all my threads tucked under it. And then I'm gonna lower my presser foot and then I'm just gonna make a chain. Now my pieces for my shoelaces turned out to be about a yard and a third. So that is 36 plus 13, that's gonna be about 49. And when, and I just went ahead and sewed three strips together and then cut those three strips apart. But always make sure that you start with a little piece like that. There's, there's a method to my madness here. So we determined that this is 49 inches. So now we need to make a chain that's created with our rolled hem that is actually longer than 49 inches. So I'm gonna shoot for about maybe 54 inches or something like that. So let's just get this stitch started, first of all. And don't forget, when you're doing a rolled hem, you wanna make sure that you have that rolled hem lever adjusted forward. I am going to um, have a little bit, now normally they want you to reduce your cutting width, but I have my cutting width right at six for this. But here we go. And then you can see, this pretty chain is coming out of this. And I think we could use this kind of thing for a lot more than just making shoelaces and these beautiful chains. They, they look like decorative threads, but that's probably another lesson. So I'm just gonna be stitching, stitching, stitching my chain. And one more thing. I'm not making all of my shoelaces in one really long piece. I'm doing each shoelace individually, and that's honestly because at about 49 inches, that's about the maximum I like to turn with this method. All right, I've got it the right length. And now this is, this is fun, <laughs> get it ready everybody, is you're gonna insert on the right side of one of your strips right in this fold. And we're gonna fold this over just like that. And we are not gonna really trim a whole lot. We are just gonna trim whiskers off.
And I like having the needle landing in the down position. We can do that on our L890 very easily or on your L860. If you have the L850, just use the heel tap feature on your foot control. And you don't wanna go at this at full speed ahead. Take your time. You can adjust the motor speed if you think it's getting out of control. See how I slowed that down? Now I do wanna mention that some of you might think that these um, shoelaces might make for a good corset tie. Well, you would be right. So if you don't wanna make shoelaces, you could certainly make a tie for like a corset or anything that laces up. I know when I've made um, items like that, in the past, sometimes it's hard to search for just the right color when you're looking for cording and things. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so we can see what our piece looks like here. I, I wanna tell you because this is so long, one of the things that I like to do is go ahead and lift my presser foot and kind of start gathering this already and see you can already see that this the reason why I like keeping this tip is as we pull that cord it's gonna pull in on itself so I'm gonna carefully try to do this just to get it started it'll make our life a lot easier as we ease on down this adventure okay see how see how that's already turning in so you just want to keep doing this gently. And you probably are gonna wanna know what is wrong with my thumb. Well, it is not a sewing accident. It, I heard it doing housework. So what, what have we learned about that? Housework and exercise are very dangerous. Shouldn't do it. Okay. Just gently, gently. So on a positive note, I did want to share with you that we have had our first miracle of 2022. I stayed awake until midnight, past midnight on New Year's Eve. So I just thought I would announce that to everyone because I, I really have a horrible reputation of, of um, falling asleep on the couch at seven o'clock. <laughs> so I made it, I, I rang in the new year on the East Coast and here in the Central Time Zone. Okay, did you see how that's just turning under there like that? That's exactly what we want. So this is gonna take me just a little bit of time. Okay, once you get it turned in on itself a fair amount, then you wanna finish off your piece. And I kind of stopped you know, right before this, this junction where I, I seamed our pieces together. But, you know, that just is gonna help us in the long run really complete this process and make a pretty little shoelace. Now, when you're sewing off after you've finished your piece, you wanna leave a tail because this is how you're gonna attach your aglet. Like I mentioned, I'm using a small print. This is a woven fabric cut on the bias, but if you wanted to use a knit, you certainly could. You could use a jersey and you wouldn't have to cut that on the bias. And that during the first COVID outbreak, that is how I made all of my earpieces for my masks. Remember when elastic and toilet paper was hard to find? <laughs> uh -huh. 
It's a new year, everybody. It's a new year. Look, see, there it comes. So now I'm just gonna pull, pull, pull. Look at that. We did it. One shoelace down. All right, to put on your aglets, you can see here I had you make a tail on both of these pieces. Well, now we're just gonna cut this off, leaving, you know, a substantial amount here. I'm just gonna cut it off right about there. And then picking two sizes here. And then I've got like, I don't know, this evil, vicious upholstery needle or darning needle or whatever. It's what I keep next to my serger to kind of tie off my ends. All right, so now I've got this in here and I'm pulling this through. You just have to slip it over that needle and then get this pulled through. There we go, all right. And then I like to just twist my material under there just to, you know, kind of help it along there. Look at that. It's going on really easily. And we just want to keep pulling. Now this, this piece is a lot longer than we really need. So ultimately I'm going to end up trimming this a little bit because this is normally where I have like an oopsie and, and something breaks. Here it's happening. Okay, so that got all the way through there. There we go. Then I've taken this diffuser off my hair dryer and I have it at the hot setting. It's gonna be noisy. But now I just wanna shrink this just a little bit. Now, I do wanna mention that this is kind of malleable when it gets warm but it will dry a little bit harder. But what I do wanna, what I do wanna say is um, I have been asked if like a heat gun would work any better or like a lighter or whatever. Well, I don't wanna use a lighter on cotton. It will burst into flames. And uh, a heat gun, very similarly, it might get a little too hot and scorch the fabric. So I think the hair dryer is Okay, so now that I have these two pieces here, I don't think these aglets need to be that long. So I'm gonna go ahead and shorten them to right about there, just like that. Shoelace. So what do you think? You gonna give it a try? I think you should. I mean, like, even if you're getting your very first surge or turning tubes like this, this is also how you would make spaghetti straps. It's also how you can do just a variety of different things and it's so much fun. Maybe even make some pot holders or something like that. But anyway, if you enjoyed this tutorial and you'd like to see more just like it, don't forget to check out the Bernina of Naperville YouTube site. It's really easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville and there you can like, comment, and subscribe. Now, time to go shovel some snow.